In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to solve a Coulomb's law problem when we have two hanging charges at rest. So these could be um, pith balls, they could be balloons, they could be any little object that is charged up, which means it has an excess of electrons or it has um, lost some electrons. So in this case over here, we have two gram masses that are hanging at rest. And what are their charges if they're equally charged? So this problem can seem pretty complicated at first because there's not a whole lot of information, but you have to remember that when you draw all the forces and set up your formulas, um, a lot of times once you have an angle and you find one part of the triangle, you can find um, multiple different components of the forces. Okay, so with that being said, if we're taking a look at this problem, we have two objects, um, we'll call them Q1 and Q2. They're both charged up. They're clearly repelling each other because each one is getting pushed away from the center. If they were attracting each other, they would just get pulled in and probably just hang vertically and sort of stick to each other. Okay, so both of them are the same sign of charge. And whatever number that is, we know that those are going to be equal. So we know that our Q1 and our Q2 are exactly the same number. We know R, which is our separation distance. Okay, so now we have to figure out how do we want to use Coulomb's law in order to solve this problem. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by drawing my force diagram and then drawing out a couple formulas that represent the forces in the x direction and the y direction. All right, so what I did is I went ahead and draw, drew my uh, force diagram, which I drew three force vectors in purple. We have our force of gravity pulling it straight down. We have the uh, electrostatic force, the repulsion from Q1 pushing Q2 away. And then we have some kind of string attached to it, pulling it upwards this way. And then I took that and I broke it up into its horizontal and vertical component so that I can place it into the sum of the forces in the horizontal direction and the sum of forces in the vertical direction. So I didn't draw the diagram on Q1 because it looks exactly like what I drew on Q2. Uh, the angles are the same. The Qs end up being the same because they said that they're equally charged. So um, I didn't draw all of it out. I'm just gonna show you how to solve for all the components on one of the charges. Okay, so as I'm looking at it, um, you don't really have to have a specific plan and how you're gonna start the problem and end the problem. You just wanna make sure you, you um, approach the process by finding your force diagram, breaking up into components and setting up your two formulas. Okay, from there, you just wanna see what you can possibly plug in and that will sort of start leading you into the direction that you wanna to head towards um, if, if all is going well. So based on the information I have, I only have a couple numbers that are really gonna help me with force. Um, I know that for my force of gravity, that's mg mass times 9.8, and I have my two grams right there. So I'm gonna take two grams, and I know that there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram, okay, which is basically gonna slide the decimal place three to the left. Okay, so that's the mass I wanna use because my standard unit for mass is kilograms, so I'm gonna use 0.002 kilograms. So I can definitely get my mg. 
And although that seems like a very small step, it looks like that helps me find my FTY. And if we find our FTY, that's one component of our triangle. And then once you have an angle and one component of your triangle, then you're pretty good to go because you can solve for all the rest of the components. So let me go ahead and solve for my MG. Um, plug in all the numbers that I can for these two formulas right here. And then we'll be one step closer to finding our Q value. All right, so I'm almost at my solution. Um, so what I did was I saw for my mg, and then that came out to 0 .0, 0 0.0196 newtons. So if FTY minus 0 0.0196 equals zero, then FTY is also 0 0.0196. So that puts me in a good position. It gives me part of my triangle. And then I wanted to use tangent so that I could get my FTX. Um, I wanted to get my FTX because it's part of this formula here. And I know if I got the FTX, then I would eventually get my FE, my electrostatic force, which is basically the F in Coulomb's law. So I decided to use tangent as my trig function because from the 30 degrees, I wanted to use the opposite over the adjacent. So my FTX over my 0 0.0196 multiplied both sides by 0 0.0196 and my FTX came out to 0 0.0113 Newtons, which is the same as my FE. So now I know how much force the um, charge is getting um, repelled by. And I have my F, my K value is constant. And then we know our R is 0.5 from the original problem. So our only unknown variable is the Q. So all we have to do is we can go ahead and slide over here to the left. And what I did is I set up everything in Coulomb's law. Like I said, I knew my force on this side is 0 0.0113. My K value, which is a constant, is always nine times 10 to the ninth. And the key here is we know that Q1 and Q2 are equal. So we know they're the same number. And when you take the same number and you multiply it by itself, it becomes squared. So this is Q squared. And my separation distance is 0 0.5. And then that's always squared in the denominator. So I'm going to cross multiply this number up and over and then cross multiply this number underneath. Okay, and then after I do both of those things, I'm going to square root that entire number so that I get my Q value. And then my Q value comes out to be 5.60 times 10 to the negative seventh coulombs. Okay, now because we squared our Q value, we don't really know if this is positive or negative. Um, so you would have to have a little background knowledge to know um, if it was a negative 5.60 times 10 to the negative seventh or positive. Um, but either way, that's going to be your value. Now there are some variations to this problem, um, which are possibly solving for an FT. Um, which will be pretty simple because once you find one part of the triangle and you have your angle, you could use a trig function or possibly Pythagorean theorem to get your FT. 
And then there are other variations where you have to find the mass. And if you did have to find the mass, then you would be given more values to begin with. Like maybe you would get the Q and then be able to solve for your FE and then basically solve our problem backwards to where we're like solving for parts of this and then work our way down to here to solve for the mass. But either way, the setup is all pretty similar. So you wanna make sure you start off with your force diagram, break everything up into vertical and horizontal components and then set up your formulas from there. Okay, as I said before, you don't necessarily need to know every single step you're going to take initially, but you just find all the pieces that you can and then that will slowly take you in the direction of finding your solution. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve a Coulomb's Law problem involving two hanging charges at rest. Thank you for watching and listening.